Let's talk about a way to look smart and double your money at the same time. How are you guys doing today? My name is Apple and today we are filling in the financial gap between schools and the real world. And today what we're talking about is the rule of 72. So what the rule of 72 is, is to wait for you to double your money and figure out exactly how long it's going to take for you to double your money with a certain investment or how uh, big of an investment you have to make in order to get a 100% return on your investment over a given time period. So that is what the rule of 72 is all about. And it's a very, very useful tool that I use very, very regularly to determine how long it's gonna take for me to double my, double my money with a certain investment. So let's just give some examples of this right now. So say I wanted to double my money with a 2% return. If I was getting 2%, 2% from an investment, how long would it take me to double my money? And the answer to that is 36 years. 36 years. What about 3%? 3%, we're gonna say it's gonna take 24 years. 24 years. And 4%, gonna take 18 years. What about 6%? It's gonna take 12 years. What about 8%? It's gonna take nine years. See a pattern here? See, the pattern is the rule of 72 right in action. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today and how you can make these calculations in your head right away. Um, don't have to do any thinking about it. And yeah, so just knowing these right off the top of your head, it's gonna make you look really smart and it's gonna help you get to doubling your money faster and more efficiently and so that you know what you're getting into with an investment uh, from the get-go so that you are not getting any surprises halfway down the road when your money hasn't moved and you think, what just happened? So here is what we're gonna be talking about today. So the rule of 72, what is it? Basically what it is, it's a way to relate interest rates and time or uh, return rates and time. So given a certain investment, uh, given a certain rate of return, how much time is it going to take for you to double your money? That is what the rule of 72 is talking about. So I just did it going forward. Um, and so we can also do it going backwards. So basically what the rule is, is you take 72, 72, and 72 is going to equal your um, ROI times how many years? So if your ROI, if your return on your investment is say 10%, 10%, it's going to take you 72 divided by 10 is 7.2. So 7.2 years to get 72 and to double your money. So it's going to take you 7.2 years with a 10% rate of return to double your money. Again, we can do this with say 5%. So 72 equals 5% times how many years is that going to be? That's going to be 14 point four years so pretty simple math we can do right here to just determine how long it's going to take us to double our money in a certain amount of time with a certain interest rate etc we can go backwards as well we can say 72 equals um, how many percent times eight years so eight years so 72 divided by eight is going to be nine so you're going to need a nine percent rate of return to double your money in eight years so pretty straightforward, pretty simple rule that you can just take around back of your pocket, just have that to know if somebody's talking about a 5% rate of return, you can just be thinking in your head, okay, it's gonna take just about 14 and a half years to get that money to double with this certain rate of return. So yeah, pretty good way to look smart and make some pretty educated estimates um, when you are talking money with somebody else. I think you'll be able to impress a lot of your friends if you've got this rule of 72 down pat. So why does it work? Why does the rule of 72 work? It seems like a pretty weird number, 72. Why is that the number? Why does that work in so many cases? Well, to be honest, it's not perfect. So um, up to about 7%, it's gonna overestimate the amount of time that it's gonna take by anywhere from like half a year to like a couple months. So it's really not gonna overestimate that much, but you could be off by about six months at most if you're under 7%. If you're over 10%, then it's gonna actually underestimate how long it's gonna take you to get there. So 
uh, you can see if with this rule, if you had a 72% rate of return, this is going to estimate that it's going to take you one year to get um, a 100% return. Obviously, you're getting a 72% return, so that's not how it's going to work. So um, anywhere above 10%, it's going to start um, un underestimating a little bit how long it's going to take you to get there. But again, it's not going to underestimate by more than a year. Um, at any point. So I know some people are going to be curious about where the 72 comes from. I know I was. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bust out some math to get us to that 72 number and figure out where it actually comes from. If you don't want the math, skip ahead to the end of the video where I'm going to be talking about how to actually use this rule to double your money. But if you're interested in the math, stick around. I think it's going to be pretty interesting and it's not really complicated at all. It's a lot more straightforward than I thought it would be. So let's hop right into doing some math. All right, so we're gonna start out with the time value of money formula, which is a crucial formula that you're gonna need in your finances. Sounds intimidating, promise you it's not. It's very, very straightforward. If you've taken like algebra one, I'm sure you've seen it before. It's the basic compounding interest formula. So basically what we got is we got F, V, so future value. So the future value of your money equals the present value of your money multiplied by one plus the interest rate, interest rate, raised to the power of n and n is how many periods there are so here's this formula looks maybe it might look intimidating but it's really not future value of your money how much your money is worth in the future multiply equals how much your money is worth right now multiplied by one plus the interest rate multiplied by how many periods there are so not too bad at all so how do we use this to derive the rule of 72 well our future value we want that to be double so we're gonna say two for our future value equals one, our present value, times one plus interest rate to the N. So you see that our present value is one, we want our future value to be two, we just wanna double our money, so that's what we're gonna do here. So this one multiplied by that is just that. So next what we're gonna do is to get this N out of here, we're going to take the log. So logs might seem intimidating, it's not, here we go. So natural log of two equals n times the natural log of one plus your interest rate. If we remember our log rules, this n can come out here um, because that's what the log does. So here's the biggest step to make and where most people might get slipped up is as this value is this uh, term right here, as interest rate approaches zero, so as interest rate gets increasingly smaller, the natural log of one plus interest rate actually just equals the interest rate. So this actually turns into L log natural log of two is going to equal n times the interest rate. So that's the biggest step to make is from here to here. And remember, as this number approaches zero, this whole term approaches just the interest rate. Um, and that's just a property of logs. And the natural log of two, we get 0 0.693 equals n times interest rate. And so, because we want our interest rate as a percentage, we're actually gonna multiply both sides by 100 and we're gonna get 69.3 equals years or N times the interest rate as a percentage. And now what we've got is our rule of 72, which is actually the rule of 69.3. Who knew? But because uh, 69.3 is not a number that is easily divisible by as many factors as 72 is, the rule is just rounded to the rule of 72 because 72 divides by two, three, four, six, eight, nine, 12, all these guys, whereas 69.3 is doesn't have very many factors, if you think about it. So 72 is just a lot more of a convenient number. But our real rule is uh, right here. So 69.3, equals the amount of years it's gonna take multiplied by the interest rate. So that brings us right on back to our rule of 72, which is actually the rule of 69.3. All right, so now we're back. I promise the math is done now, but we, what we did figure out is that the rule of 72 is actually more accurate when you use the number 69.3, because that is what you actually get when you derive the formula. We just use 72 because it has a lot more factors like two, three, four, six, eight, nine, and 12, whereas 69.3 does not have very many factors, and it is hard to just do that math in your head. So now let's talk about how you can use the rule 
of 72 to double your money. So if you have a goal, let's say in 10 years, you wanna double your money. So again, we've got our, we'll, we'll just use 72 for simplicity's sake, but if you do wanna start using 69.3, that is perfectly fine as well. That's gonna give you more accurate results than 72, but we're just gonna keep using 72. So we're gonna say 72 equals 10 years um, times what interest rate? Well, our interest rate is going to equal 7.2 because 72 divided by 10 gives us 7.2. So that is how we're gonna use this rule. And so if you wanna double your money in 10 years, you're gonna to have to find something that's going to give you a 7.2 rate of return. And nine times out of 10, nothing is guaranteed in your returns. Um, you can look at historical data, you can look at upcoming trends, you can look at fundamentals in a stock, you can look at past performance in real estate markets, you can look at a lot of different data, a lot of different factors, but nothing is going to guarantee you a certain rate of return. So you're gonna use this number as a goal. So your goal is to hit 7.2% return every year in order to double your money in that 10 year time frame. So say you are 20 right now, you wanna have twice as much money when you're 30. Say you have $10,000 to invest, you want it to be 20,000 when you're 30. So you put it in a, I don't know, a um, index fund that is going to, that has returned on average like 10%. Uh, I think it would be pretty safe to say that you'd have a pretty decent chance of getting to that 7.2% mark, depending on how long that index fund has been around, if it's only been around for a couple of years, if it has a history of like a 100 year span where it's averaging that 10% return, then I think you might have a decent chance of getting that 7.2% return. But this is just a rule for finding out, I wanna double my money in 10 years, how much of a rate of return do I have to have quickly to determine if something's going to be an investment that's gonna get you to your goals or not. So if you're confident in achieving a certain rate of return, say you uh, are confident in achieving, um, I don't know, a 6% return in uh, some kind of investment grade bonds or something, I'm not sure. But say you know you can get a 6% return. Uh, you can use this rule to figure out how many years it's gonna take you to double your money. So again, how many years it's gonna take you is it's going to take you 12 years to double your money with this, um, if you're sure you can get a 6% return, as sure as you can be about a 6% return, um, then it's gonna take you 12 years. Every 12 years, your investment is going to double. So say you put in $10,000, 6%, 12 years later, you got 20,000, 12 years later, you got 40,000, 12 years later, you got 80,000. So this rule is going to keep um, doubling. It's not gonna keep adding 10,000. It's going to keep doubling your investment. That is the power of compound interest and the rule of 72, which, I think this rule is very helpful in helping you move towards your goals and being able to set realistic goals, like about how much of an interest rate you can, or a return, return on investment you can get. So if you know you can get 6%, then you can set a realistic goal of doubling your money every 12 years. If you wanna double your money in 12 years, or in 10 years, you know you have to set a goal of getting a 7.2% rate of return in order to achieve that goal of doubling your money in 10 years. So I think that is where the power of the rule of 72 is in setting goals, setting realistic goals that you're gonna be able to achieve and that are not out of your reach. So now let's look at one last practical example. Say you wanna send your kid to college and your kid has just been born and you have 25 grand, you've got 25 grand today, the day your kid is born, that you wanna set aside and you want them to be able to go to college someday with this 25 grand, and you assume the cost of college when they wanna to go to be 100 grand to get them through college. Now, I don't think that's particularly um, realistic, but we'll just say you got 25 grand now, you want 100 grand then to send them through college, what, are, what kind of rate of return are you gonna need? So kids gonna to go to college when they're 18. So we've got our rule of 72 equals year times ROI. All right, so here's our rule of 72, and we know our kid is gonna to wanna to go to college in 18 years, and we know we need to double our money twice. So, so we need to double it from 25 to 50, and from 50 to 100. So we need two doubling periods over 18 years. Each doubling period is going to take nine years. So we know we have our years is going to be nine times our ROI. Our ROI is going to have to be 8% per 
for us to achieve this goal. So if we get an 8% return on our 25 grand over these 18 years, then we should be able to get 100 grand in 18 years to be able to send this kid to college. So um, over our first nine years, our money is gonna go from, so 25K to 50K in nine years with our 8% rate of return. And then in our next nine years, we're gonna go from 50K all the way up to 100K so that by the time that kid turns 18, they have got $100 in their 529 plan, which is a college savings account, and they will be able to get a $100,000 worth of education if you are able to achieve that 8% rate of return consistently over those 18 years. So that is a good way to be able to use the rule of 72 in a practical example for sending a kid through college with 25 grand today that you want to be 100 grand when they are ready to go to school. So that wraps it up for the video, guys. That is the rule of 72 for you. I think it's a very, very useful way to um, think about money, think about doubling your money, and it's a rule that I use very, very often. And if this video did help you guys out at all, if you've never heard of the rule of 72 before, or if you had and you're just more curious about it, um, definitely leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to be notified whenever I put out a future video like this or like something different. So uh, also feel free to share this video with a friend who is interested in doubling their money because this is a much, much safer way to do so than investing in Bitcoin or cryptos or something like that. This is a consistent way to do it. This is backed by math. Cryptos are backed by hype. So I would recommend sticking to the rule of 72 before you stick to the rule of Bitcoin. So that's all I got for the video, guys. I will see you tomorrow. And until next time.